Welcome to the best of high school sports in Northern California. We are the B Prep Show. And we're coming to you from Sheldon High School within the realm of the Oak Grove Unified School District to show you some NorCal basketball action right to the finish. Welcome back for another edition of the Bee Prep Show. I'm Mike Finnerty, joined as always by Joe Davidson of the Sacramento Bee. And we are coming to you from Sheldon High School. Don't adjust your TV sets to sliding. It is a slight greenish yellow tint, but we enjoy being here. Well, I thought it was green with envy or just green of fatigue, but uh, Northern California Regional Championships or next weekend at Sleep Train Arena. We will be there just like we were at the Sac Joaquin Section Championships in that big NBA venue that the Sacramento Kings use. But the early rounds, are some of the the danger rounds and that's where some of the upsets happen and we've we've seen it ourselves yes we have but joe we are going to start off the show with highlights we got plenty we're going to start it off with the boys it's an open division game it's Folsom taking on el cerrito we head out to vista lago high school in Folsom where the number four Folsom bulldogs were playing host the number five el cerrito gauchos in round one of the northern california regional open division playoffs both teams battle back and forth early on in this one but in the second quarter Trey Finch, he helped spark the Bulldogs on a run that would push the lead to nine. Then as the second quarter played out, Folsom guard Jordan Ford took over with one impressive shot after the next. He would finish the game with 18 points and the lead would climb to 41-22 by halftime. In the second half, it was a much different Gauchos team as they got the lead to under 10, but Folsom held tough. Jared Wall, he knocks down the corner jumper for a nine point lead late in the third. Then to the fourth, El Cerrito closed the gap to six, but Josiah DeGuara, he looked for his shot time and again and delivered to help fight off the El Cerrito run. Looking to seal it late, Wall gets loose for this easy basket with 17 seconds to go as Folsom tops El Cerrito by a final of 78-75 and will now score off against Bishop O'Dowd on Tuesday. It was a crazy game, you know, we, uh, it was actually pretty intense because, you know, we, for the defensive side, we wasn't doing so great because they was they was pushing the ball out in the middle, and you know we couldn't really stop it. And then they actually started forcing turnovers, and then the turnovers we really just jumped on it. So then we got we got the lead. You know we came out fast in the first half. We were able to get up a, a big lead, but we let down a little bit in the second half. But our team's full of grit and uh, heart, and we were able to pull it off. You can see all those terrific athletes for the Gauchos, El Cerrito of the North Coast section, but Jordan Ford, we've talked about him all last year, we talked about him this year, he's just got a championship ability and poise about him. He takes over, so much depth and talent, well-coached Folsom team. The next road is the, is the toughest one, state ranked number one, Bishop O'Dowd of Oakland. That's the powerhouse team that's not lost in, in California competition. Folsom looks forward to that. They don't back down from anybody, the Bulldogs. We're going to talk later. We have a commentary about the open division and how it needs to be adjusted and why it's a sound thing, but it's really fractured. It needs a lot of work. Yeah, it does. And, and back to the Folsom game, you had to be impressed how Josiah DeGara came up big at the end. Trey Finch throughout the game, Jordan Forts, you get contributions from everyone with the Bulldogs. All right, Jill, let's keep it going. How about Berkeley going up against Sheldon? To Sheldon High School, we go for another NorCal Regional Playoff game. This a round two matchup in Division One, where the number seven Berkeley Yellow Jackets were on the road to take on the number two Huskies. Winner takes on number three San Ramon Valley on Tuesday. We're going to pick it up late third. Berkeley down two, and the Yellow Jackets tied up here at 42 all. The balance of the third quarter had both teams trading baskets, but the final two minutes belonged to Berkeley, taking the lead at 54-47, heading to the fourth. In that final frame, Sheldon was chasing throughout and never could regain the lead as Berkeley fends off a late run by Sheldon and prevails 79-74. All right, Joe, we are going to switch gears from basketball to baseball, but we have more basketball highlights later on the show. But baseball, you and I had a chance recently to catch up with Houston Astros catcher Max Stassi out of Yuba City High School. Quite a talent, and he's looking forward to this year. The whole thing about him, and it's a message for anybody at any level is don't slow down. You have to work even harder as you get older. He's an example. Yep. All right, catching up with Mr. Stassi here. Uh, you're doing a little off-season workout, getting ready to, to head to spring training soon. Uh, what do you look to improve on? What, what, are, what are your goals as you're here working out and even in the off-season? Uh, I just try to take it one day at a time. You know, I, I believe in the process and, and uh, getting wrapped up in that, you know, not worrying about results. and. Just going out every day and competing. That's the main thing. You go out and compete and, you know, things will line up for you. But 
you know, as far as goals this year, I just want to, you know, just go out and, like I said, compete, stay healthy, and uh, have a successful year. Your father, uh, Jim Stassi, was a Sacramento Bee All-Metro guy way back in the day. We just aged him. Uh, and he got to coach all of his sons, won championships. He's retired from coaching. He gets to watch you guys. What, what lessons did you learn from him then, and what are you still learning from him now? Uh, he's taught me everything in, in life, you know, on the field, off the field. And, uh, you know, he just he's always always preached to us, me and my brothers, that, uh, you know, hard work, you know, that's that's the main thing. you got to put in a lot of work if you want to be successful at something. And, and uh, you know, that's that's pretty much the, the root of, you know, what he taught us, you know, just the little things in, in life. And, you know, when we would screw up in school or something, he would he would make sure that he taught us a lesson there. But, yeah, I'm very thankful for, for everything he's taught us. You look back much in high school days. You said you guys you had quite the talented teams. And uh, do you recall those moments uh, very often? What stands out for you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I work out with a group of guys that they went to Jesuit and a few went to Oak Ridge and, and uh, Bella Vista. So I make sure that, that, you know, I let them know about Honker Nation. And uh, we were uh, SAC B, uh, number one, I think, for about a year and a half. So, yeah, we were uh, held down that number one ranking. And us and Jesuit, I remember, in high school. But it was uh, – a lot of fun. That was the time of my life, you know, playing high school for uh, high school baseball with with the Yuba City Honkers. And what's a lesson that you might give to aspiring high school athletes? Um, you know, effort and pride and all that. I mean, you still carry that all these years later. But what, what's a message you might give? Uh, just stick to your roots. You know, I'm always going to be a honker, and uh, you know, it, it's like I said, one of those things: hard work, pride, and in, in where you come from, and and uh, you know, always stay humble. You know, there, there's going to be uh, times where you know there's opportunities for you to feel like you're you're the man but always remember that there's somebody that's bigger and better than you that you've always got to uh, try to outwork them well, one last question biggest throw for you so far uh, professionally uh, things that stand out a hit whatever it is uh yeah i'd say my first uh hit in the big leagues you know that was a pretty special moment you know with my dad there in the stands and and uh it was a whirlwind for 24 hours but that's probably the the highlight of my career so far and and uh, hopefully a uh, couple World Series, you know, appearances wouldn't be bad either here in the near future. Yeah. All right, Joe, good to catch up with Mr. Max Stassi. And by the way, he's having a very good spring so far, and uh, I think he's going to have a breakout year. He's had a taste of the big leagues, mm -hmm. including taking uh, – his first RBI was off the face with the bases loaded, so he's he's going to bounce back. He's he's hungry. He's ready. Yes, he is. All right, when we come back from the break, we have more basketball and more baseball. This is your RAM Auto Update. Just in, the classic term used car is old-fashioned, outdated, and no longer of any particular relevance. Let's party. The Roseville Auto Mall is throwing a massive factory-certified pre-owned sales event. That means incredible savings on just about every kind of car in the world. All factory certified. It's happening now. It's going fast. In layman terms, skedaddle. The Roseville Auto Mall driven to be the best. In 1952, we opened our first market in the Central Valley. 63 harvests have come and gone since then, but we're still here. Because here, roots matter. And not just the ones pulled from the ground, but the ones that keep us grounded. The ones that make sure we'll always stay that hardworking family that started a market for other hardworking families. Save Mart. Roots matter. We want to thank our title sponsor, Save Mart Supermarkets. Shop Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. All right, welcome back to the very best of high school sports in Northern California. We're in the midst of the Northern California CIF basketball playoffs, the championships next weekend at Sleep Train Arena. You'll be there. I'll be there. It's always fun to be there. Before we talk more basketball, more highlights, and some open division commentary, how it can be better and it needs to be better, let's get back to baseball. Over in Yolo County, you caught up with one of the great talents in California. Oh, yes, Ryan Kreidler of Davis, Davis High School. He recently committed to UCLA. He's ready for a breakout year, and we had a chance to catch up with him as part of our school's financial credit union, Game On Athlete of the Week. Last year, the Davis Blue Devils captured the Division I section baseball title, and one of the anchors of that team was Ryan Kreidler. Now a junior, the 6'4 shortstop says that despite the loss of several key players from a year ago, the Blue Devils are still driven to win. You know, this league and this section and this area is so tough. It's not always, you know, 
um, a probable thing. But, um, you know, if the cards play right, we'll have a good chance to, to make a run at it this year. And I just definitely want to see our team do the best we can, whether that's going really deep into playoffs, first round, winning league, you know, whatever that is. In the offseason, Kreider gave a verbal commitment to play for UCLA, which he felt was the best fit for him. I just wanted a bigger school um, that that provides the education I was looking, I was looking for, you know, because everybody, it's such a long shot to make it in baseball, and you, you obviously have to have a solid plan to fall back on. And falling back is such a loose word there because it's UCLA. It's really... I'm very lucky to be a part of it. Another sport Kreidler enjoys is basketball. As a forward for the Blue Devils, he finished the season averaging 10.5 points per game, and he feels that playing basketball prepares him for the baseball season. Coming into baseball season, not everybody, especially the baseball-only guys, aren't completely adjusted to a completely you know, um, competitive atmosphere. Coming into baseball season after, after a tough basketball season, it just makes you so much more hungry to get wins and to be a successful team because it's so hard to come by in this league in this area. So um, just the competitive atmosphere for sure is the biggest part. Kreiler not only believes in playing sports as part of the overall high school experience, but supporting other campus teams and programs is just a part of that experience as well. We've had you know a lot of girls basketball games and a lot of football games where I've tried to um, you know, step in there and be sort of a leader of the student body as much as I can because you really only get one high school experience and enjoy the high school years and I will enjoy the college years too because those are those are definitely memories you're going to have for the rest of your life. All right, my good stuff to see Ryan Kreidler compete. You ought to see him in basketball. He will brawl with you, bang for a rebound. He's a little frustrated right now because he had a minor wrist surgery, nothing serious, but he wants to get back out there and compete. He needs to, and I think his parents want to get him out of the house too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, Joe, back to basketball. We've got more NorCal Regional Championship games, playoff games. This time we're going to go to the girls. It's Division Four. Bradshaw Christian hosting Piedmont. Over to Bradshaw Christian High School in Elk Grove. Now it's another round two showdown. And would this be the final high school game for the Pride's terrific senior duo of Erica Bean and Jordan Bell? And would it be the final game for longtime head coach Mike Rubel? Taking on the number six Highlanders of Piedmont, Pride at number three. Not a lot of scoring early on in this one, but it's Bean here for a three-pointer, giving Bradshaw Christian a one-point advantage. Short time later, Bell fights inside for a putback to go up by three, and then Bean all the way for the easy basket here to go up by four as the first quarter came to a close. In the second quarter, Piedmont began to hit its shots, and that would get the Huskies going. Piedmont takes a lead of the break at 19-15 and would then outscore Bradshaw Christian 26-22 in the second half and take this by a final of 45-37. When we come back after the break, we're going to have some biting commentary on the NorCal Open Division. Is it good? Is it flawed? we got some opinions on that. What else? And we've got some softball. I had a chance to catch up with some former Casa Roble High School stars who are doing big things for University of Washington, Ali Aguilar and Crystal Auburt, and our Von Housen Stars of the Week. There's a history you feel when you visit any of the Von Housen automotive dealerships. You'll sense the quality of Mercedes-Benz and you'll experience the low-pressure atmosphere that comes from two generations of family ownership. Mercedes-Benz of Sacramento, Mercedes-Benz of Eldorado Hills, and Mercedes-Benz of Rockland. Three great reasons to drive one of the world's best automobiles. Come feel the difference or visit vonhausen.com. We'd like to thank our sponsors, starting with Save Mart Supermarkets, where fresh comes first. Shop at Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. Schools Financial Credit Union, banking for everyone, value, convenience, and emerging technology. Von Haus and Automotive Group celebrating 50 years with Mercedes-Benz. Stop dreaming and start driving. Roseville Auto Mall. If you're looking for a used car, go to the Roseville Auto Mall with over 6,000 vehicles to choose from. And Les Schwab Tires. Since 1952, we promise we'll get you more for your money. Welcome back to the very best in high school sports in Northern California. We have the B Prep Show, and we like to break down the teams, themes, championships. Fun time of year right now. Baseball, softball, all kinds of good stuff, and basketball. Yes, we got lots of basketball and lots of baseball and lots of softball. It's a busy show, but Joe, let's talk NorCal regional playoffs in particularly the open division and how it's really changed things these last few years these last two years you've got a few problems with it go ahead let it out what's your biggest problem with it i think the the foundation the whole idea of the open division is very sound you put your monster heavyweight programs in the open division 
I think it should go another layer. Put your private schools in the open division because those are your monster programs. Well, what about Sheldon in pre previous years or Folsom, both teams of the Sac Joaquin section? Well, those are public schools that have ups and downs. They have winning seasons and they have losing seasons. Private school monsters, Midi, De La Salle, uh, Bishop O'Dowd, modern day down in Southern California, do they ever have off years? No, it's a credit to the great programs, the great coaching, but there's just a different animal. And some, let's talk about some of the open division players that you don't see in public schools. Ivan Rabb, you, you, you've seen him, I've seen him. We go, oh, this guy's an NBA player. He's a six foot 11 standout for Bishop O'Dowd. How about others? How about Stanley Johnson? Uh, modern day last year, he's one of the best players in the country for the University of Arizona. A couple years back, Aaron Gordon, Archbishop Mitty, he's with the Orlando Magic right now in the NBA. So we've seen some superstars come through here. And of course, this weekend, we very well may see uh, Rab back uh, at Sleep Train Arena one more time. So, but back to your point on the open division, I agree with you. All those private teams are probably best served being the open division. Some teams have benefited, though, when you look at Division One. Some of those teams that move up to open will leave some teams back there, Division One, like a Pleasant Grove. They won a state, uh, state championship in Division One. The Girls did the same thing as well. So some have benefited, some have not benefited by the change. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's a work in progress. I th it's absolutely a work in progress. And Roger Blake, uh, the executive director of the CIF, and uh, Brian Seymour and Ron Nochetti, the, they're the brain trust, and they brought up a good point and said, it's not the CIF acting like the NC2A with an iron hammer and saying, this is the way we're going to do it. It has to be voted on. Changes have to be voted on by the member schools and the 10 sections that make up the state. But the CIF is listening. They will listen. If they, we have something to say. We don't like it. We, we like most of it, but we think it needs changes. But the bottom line is you want to have fun and yeah. you want to make it fair and a balance and it's not easy but I, I think changes are in order and I think overall the idea is good it will it will probably get some tweaking over the years all right Joe you and I like to recognize a couple athletes every week and we're gonna do it one more time with our Von Housen stars of the week this week's Von Housen stars of the week are Tegan Jones of Capital Christian and Jordan Cruz of McClatchy Jones, a six foot four junior guard for the Cougars, was one of several guys who came up big in Capital Christian's 59-42 win over Palma in round two of the Division IV NorCal playoffs. Jones had 14 points, eight rebounds, two assists, and three steals. Freshman Zach Chappelle, he was impressive as well with 16 points and four rebounds. Cruz, the five foot 10 sophomore guard, led the Lions in scoring with 25 points in McClatchy's 77-54 win over Davis in last week's NorCal regional playoff game. Now, Cruz and the Lions will advance to take on Pittsburgh in the NorCal semifinal round set for Tuesday. All right, Mike, that's always a fun segment. It's amazing the skill, the talent of some of these student athletes. How about when they go to college? We have so many athletes that go to college from the Sac Joaquin section and then they continue the momentum, very impressive. Yeah, and two more, they're doing it right now, former Castle Robley Rams softball stars who are now at the University of Washington. They were a powerful one-two punch for the Castle Robley Rams softball team for a three-year period, and during that time, they helped lead the Rams to a pair of Division II section championships. Ali Aguilar and Crystal Aubert are together again, but this time at the University of Washington. Now in her second year as a shortstop for the Huskies, Aguilar has already gone through the tough first year of transition to the college ranks. Yeah, it's definitely hard. I mean, there are a lot of seniors and a lot of older players, so I definitely had a lot on my shoulders, and I got to start so that was really cool but you, you just learn a lot your freshman year you kind of are thrown around everywhere and you just kind of have to learn to go with the flow but it's better this year because I kind of know the ropes and know how it goes and stuff like that so it's good. As for Aubert she's gone from full-time third baseman in high school to part-time outfielder for Washington but as the freshman this year she's just taking it all in. We're a pretty young team this year, so it's nice to get out there and learn new positions and wherever the coach needs you is like where you're going to play. And it's just nice to see all the traditional stuff that goes on here, and it's just an honor to be here. Last year, Aguilar was named to the Pac-12 All-Freshman team, something she wasn't even thinking about when the announcement was made. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even know that the honors were coming out or anything. I was just playing, you know, just doing what I do, and I just saw it. It was pretty cool to be on that team. Aubert's role as a newcomer to the team this year is just to help out where she can. I think it's just starting with contributing and then um, leading off of there and then so just playing I'm playing right field right now so it's a big adjustment from playing third base in high school so it's just whatever I can do to help the team is what I want to do. 
For Aguilar, she's two years removed from high school ball, and it's nothing but fond memories when she looks back at her time as a Ram. I think just winning the section championships and just being with my teammates is just really fun to have that common goal every single time and be able to really compete and go out there and play with teammates like Crystal. I think it's really cool that we both got to come to Washington. All right, Mike, good stuff there. The pride of the Castle Robley Rams, now the pride of the Washington Huskies, all rooted in championship softball. Yeah, and the Huskies love having those two. All right, one more segment to go. We're going to get back to some more baseball. I catch up with some former high school stars who are in the minor leagues, and we'll tell you about a big time coaching change in football. A credit union is a not-for-profit member-owned financial institution. Can your bank say that? Demand more from your financial institution. Make the switch to Schools Financial Credit Union for low loan rates, state-of-the-art technology, making accounts accessible anytime, anywhere, and more ATMs than most major banks. Anyone who lives, works, or worships in Sacramento and its surrounding counties is eligible to join. Be part of the credit union difference and bank happily ever after with Schools. We want to thank our title sponsor, Save Mart Supermarkets. Shop Save Mart up and down the Central Valley. Welcome back to the very best of high school sports in Northern California. We are the B Prep Show. We try to tell you about the, the best teams and the best athletes and the championship moments. And sometimes the coaches make the move. In this case, in the Sac Joaquin section, we have one of the big headliner coaches, Paul Doherty of Sacramento High School, is on the move. Big move. He's going to Whitney High School, Joe, to take over from Mike Jimenez. A uh, little surprised when I heard about it. You know, he's done such a great job with the, with the Dragons, and they've been a terrific team these last few years. But you think about him going to Whitney, and who knows? Maybe Jimenez will help him out in some way. But he's an offensive mind. He'll, he'll take that program and keep it going. We're excited to see it. Yeah, and it's a big change. You're going from Oak Park, the heart of the city, where some kids have some rough, tough background and he's had players at Sacramento High School, Coach Doherty did, that were homeless, lived in their cars. Now he's in Placer County, Whitney, in Rockland, and they're, um, there's not homeless kids, but there's a lot of pressure by the parents in the community. That's gonna be an interesting uh, dynamic there. And Paul Doherty was so attached to his shell, Sac High players, he left as a teacher with no real job yet at Whitney until the fall, but he couldn't stay on campus and see that dynamic and that's a that's a very emotional thing but uh big moves for these kind of programs it really is a big impact yeah it is a big move and uh whitney's lucky to have him it's going to be fun to see him on the sidelines there uh sack they will have to replace him and i'm sure they will but uh paul doherty going to whitney high school all right we got more baseball you thought we were done with baseball well we've got some more interviews uh had a chance to get out to elk grove high recently bradshaw christian and some of their high school star former high school stars were helping out i had a chance to catch up with jd davis jared deacon and dom nunez all used to play with elk grove all are in the minor leagues right now and also brady dragmar used to play for bradshaw christian his little brother grant dragmar is playing for the pride so we got their thoughts on uh, looking back and, and, and looking ahead to spring training. The Oak Grove area has produced talented baseball players and four guys looking to make it to the bigs one day include Elk Grove High grads J.D. Davis, Jared Deacon, and Dom Nunez, as well as Brady Dragmeyer, a graduate of Bradshaw Christian. All are playing in the minor leagues and enjoy coming back to visit their old schools. It's awesome to see some uh, old faces and everything, so it's a, it's, a great, it's a great thing out here. Definitely learned a lot from a great coaching staff and uh, had some great teams here. And um, I uh, try and come back and help out as much as I can. Uh, I think I'm um, looking forward to this year's team. I uh, know a couple guys that are still on the team, so it's definitely exciting for me. I've known these guys since they're little. And uh, yeah, when they come up, talk to me, um, ask me for advice, I, I give them to them straight up, say how it's like, and uh, just work hard. That's all you can do is work hard and uh, control yourself. 
For Davis, he had a successful three-year stint at Cal State Fullerton, was drafted in round three last June by the Houston Astros, and he could be on a quick path to the majors, so he knows exactly what he'll need to work on in spring training. I know hitting will always be there. It'll always work for me, but I think defense really, I mean, I've been working hard at it, so I really want to improve at defense and show people that I can play third base. Deacon and Davis were teammates at Elk Grove High School and CSU Fullerton. Now Deacon is in the San Francisco Giants minor league system, and he speaks for all the guys when he talks about the baseball season and the grind it can be and how you have to keep fighting. Yeah, I love it. It's um, it's quite an experience. It's a blast seeing all the coaches that helped me since I was uh, just a freshman here, just young and scared, and now I see him. I could uh, have fun with him, talk, seeing all the other uh, uh, varsity herd players going, and it's quite an experience seeing him. Nunez, a 2013 graduate of Elk Grove, played shortstop and catcher in high school. He's in his second year in the Colorado Rockies organization, is a full-time catcher now, and he's feeling more acclimated as a pro with each passing day. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a comfort level, you know. I'm starting to build some confidence and uh, getting some respect for some guys. Uh, you know, just I think my biggest thing was trying to be a leader as, as much as I can, you know, when I was here at Elk Grove and stuff. So uh, just trying to get back in that comfort level again with um, that. But also the mental part of uh, the game was definitely the biggest change for me because, um, you know, you try to do it every day and day in and day out. and. You, you know, you get 500 at bats or whatever, you know, and so you just got to be able to turn the page really quickly and uh, every pitch is um, important and you're trying to think next pitch as much as possible. Out of all four of these guys, Dragmeyer has spent the longest time in the minors, drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays in 2011. His four years of experience have given him a clearer look at the big picture. Yeah, uh, crazy to think about, you know, almost going in my fifth season. You know, I feel like a veteran at this thing. So, um, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, feeling the ranks and, and knowing where I stand now is a good thing. You know, going through development stages uh, has come and gone. Um, you know, I feel like I've developed a pitcher um, where I know I'm going to be in a couple of years and uh, knocking on the door here hopefully pretty soon. So it's a lot of fun and I enjoy it and uh, give it your all every day. All right, my good stuff, J.D. Davis, Deacon, Dragmire, all Metro players, champions from yesterday. Year. Loyal. They come back to their high school programs to get a little work in. Talk to the younger guys. The coaches love that. Um, they're not so far removed from the high school realms, and it's funny how fast it goes from the high school fun to the business of contracts, road trips, and trying to make a living in baseball. Yeah, you know, it's good to see those guys, though, with the high schoolers. You know, they were there just a few years ago. Heck, Dom Nunez graduated two years ago. And I asked those guys, you know, the, did, do they ever ask for advice? Okay, yeah, you know, sometimes. But uh, uh, again, good to see them out there. Had a chance to grip, pull them aside and get their thoughts uh, with spring training in full bore right now. So, And you know, big yeah. baseball town forever in this region. Who knows how far these guys can go? I, th I think, that, you know, they're all projected to be major league guys around the corners. A lot of work to do. Wouldn't surprise me if all three of them made them. Yeah. Well, that puts a wrap on this show, Joe. We had baseball, softball, NorCal Regional Basketball Championships, boys and girls. Next week, we will have baseball. We will have softball. We'll finally get a chance to get out there and cover both of those. And, of course, we're going to have NorCal finals and hoops out at Sleep Train Arena. Get ready, Joe. More long days ahead. Yeah, and we won't look so green and peaked. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the lighting at Sheldon High School here, not because of the season's over, just because it's a little green. Yeah. All right, folks, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.